Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we are ready to start. I believe uh, we are getting we are getting everything set up with have Please bear with us a few more moments while we get everything set up. Okay, I'm already. Perfect. I'm okay. ready. Yeah. Perfect. Coco, we are also ready to go. So uh, whenever you want, uh, I believe uh, perhaps the Peace Boat team who is in Hiroshima with you wanted to start with a few questions. Uh, so I will leave the floor to you. Over to Hiroshima. Uh, Lucero, can you hear me? Lucero, yes. can you hear me? Yes. She said yes. yes. So, Koko san, hi everyone. Uh, Akira Kawasaki from Hiroshima. I'm now with Koko Kondo, the survivors of Hiroshima. Uh, today, we are having a very special occasion to talk to her directly on the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing on Hiroshima. So Coco, thank you so much uh, for being here. And let me ask you some questions. First of all, please uh, tell us what you did experience uh, 75 years ago in the city Hiroshima. Okay. Thank you for asking me. 1955, uh, no, I'm sorry, 1945, August 6th, uh, that morning was, uh, you know, clear green, uh, clear blue sky, and uh, air rate was off. So people started going out. And uh, my father is a Methodist minister in Hiroshima, and it's because air rate was off. One with the church member came to see my mother and me uh, at the parsonage. The parsonage was located about 1.1 kilometer away from Hypercenter. And the, my father's church was located about 800 meter. So since, you know, the, the, the guests came to see my mother and me, uh, my mother decided to hold me in her own. Then, age 15, the whole house crashed. That means we were under the house. And uh, the, the, all the roof was on top of my mother's head. So she was unconscious, too, unconscious for a while. But luckily, the consciousness came back in swirls in you know, uh, back again, but uh, the end she was able to you know conclude. She asked for help, but no one came to help us. So she knew she had to do something. She moved little by little and made a little hole, put me out. Then she got out. When she was out, she saw the. All the, you know, the surrounding, the fires over the place. But it's, for me, it's because of my mother, I was able to live through it. And how was your life since then? Well, my life is interesting. At first, according to my parents, I had, a, you know, like a radiation sickness. I had a blood diarrhea or high fevers in days in days in days but we didn't have any doctors medicine nothing so one day the medical student came to check on me and he said to my parents i don't think this girl can live through it but i was able to live through it my, as I told you, my father's school, uh, church is very close to the hypo center, 800 meter away from Grand Zero. The, the church, the tower was gone and the windows are gone. Only the buildings outside of the you know, wall 
will remain. Sometimes I can see that, you know, those children came to church. Those children are like you know, street children. They don't have any place to stay. Some lucky ones were able to stay in the orphanage, but all of them didn't have any place to stay. So at first, I couldn't understand why those children are, you know, staying around the church. And my mother told me they are the orphanage. Then the age three, the many teenager girls came to church one by one. One day, one girl found a nice comb and she wanted to comb my hair. I just wanted to see the comb which she, hold, she was holding. So I turned it right and tried to see the hair, her hand, fingers. All the fingers were melted together. And even as a little girl, I did not ask them, what's happened to your hands? What's happened to your fingers? What's happened to your, you know, face? Because I knew that's not nice to thing to ask. But the older girls, I don't know how many of them at that time, but you know, they are talking to the classmates why they were disfigured. And I listened to their conversation very carefully. Then I learned one thing that one bomb was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. That's why they were disfigured by the fire, the carriage. And when I found out, I said to myself, when I grown up, I have to do something. I would like to find the people who are on the B-29 or a gay. I wanted to give them a punch or a bite or a kick. Because as a child, I thought that's the best way to do the revenge. But I don't want my parents to you know, find out. Because if they find out and they are going to give me a long you know, speech, might be using Bible and you know, this is not the right you know, way to think. So I did not. I don't want them to find out. I decided to put deep inside until I grown up. Life is interesting. That was my plan. But sometimes we cannot do according to the you know, own plan. 1955, 10 years after the disaster, my father took 25 girls who were heavily, you know, uh, the, the, this, this field by the you know, heat, steroid. The Mount, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York said they would like to give a treatment to those girls. So my father escorted them and went to the United States. Next day, my mother received a phone call from the state, said, Mrs. Tanimoto, please come to the United States tomorrow with your children, but don't tell anyone, especially to your husband. My mother didn't know what to do, but however, we, next day, we left Japan and went to Hollywood. I would never forget, May, May 11th, 1955. I was a fifth grader, 10 years old. I was at the, in a big auditorium. Many, many audience are looking at us who we are, you know, on the stage. I was able to see the other side of the stage, my father's best friend from Emory, the Kendra School of Theology, because they studied together at uh, grad school. Then another lady, she was a missionary in Japan. I know her too. But the third person I never met before, curious fifth grader, Coco, would like to see, we would like to find out the name of that person, particular person. I asked my mother, what is his name? Who is he? 
my mother gave me she didn't give me the answer right away because later I found out she had a very difficult time making decision because Coco is only 10 years old and she wasn't sure that Coco could understand the whole situation. But she decided Coco is already 10. She should know what's going on in this world. So she said, Coco, the man over there, his name is Captain Lobart Lewis, who was a co-pilot of the Inara Gay. I was so shocked because that is my you know, plan for later in my life, not the, you know, 10 years old fifth grader. And I just staring at his eye. They are the bad one. I am the good one. Because I thought if they never drop the bomb, those children never have to become dolphins. And the girls didn't have to disfigure it whole body. So I wanted to do the revenge. But it was too soon to meet this man. The only thing I could do was on the stage, just staring at him. The TV program called This Is Your Life. And the uh, interviewer, Ralph Edward, asked Captain Luce, how did you feel after you dropped the bomb? Captain Luce said, 8.15, they came to the Hiroshima and exactly on the 15, 8.15, they dropped the bomb. Then the Enora Gay have to leave right away because no one knew what's going to happen to the air airplane. So they left Hiroshima. But they had you know, another order to see the, whatever they dropped on Hiroshima City, the result of whatever you know, uh, they dropped. So Anura Gay came back to Hiroshima and from the, the sky, he said, from the window, he saw the Hiroshima. Hiroshima was disappeared. Then he said, I wrote it on my log. My God, what have you done? As, a, as I told you how I feel. So I just looking at his eye because he is my enemy. But after he said that, the tears came down from his eye. I was so shocked because I thought he's a monster. Uh-uh, he's not. He's same human being. I learned that I should not hate this person. If I hate, I should hate the war itself, which human being caused. And inside of myself, you know, while adults are talking, sometimes I, you know, I thought I was a good person. I was a right person, but that's not true. Sometimes I won't listen to my parents' words or I, Parents said, don't fight with a young brother. But I had a fight with him. So I have a bad evil myself. I felt sorry. I said uh, forgiveness. I, I, I had to tell the God to forgive me. Toward to the end of the show, I don't know why I did but I just tried to walk toward to him because I just wanted to touch his hand to show my apologies. I didn't know anything about him, but I hated. So I just wanted to touch. He was looking toward to the audience, but he felt little Coco's hand so touching his hand. He hold my hand very tightly. Today, 75 years ago, uh, 
it was happened to Hiroshima. And uh, I'm so grateful that I had a chance to meet Captain Luke. Yeah, that I did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just keep, keep this uh, info. So thank, thank you very much for sharing that. And since then, you've worked so hard uh, uh, for peace and the world without nuclear weapons. And now many governments and people are working so hard for the abolition of nuclear weapons. And three years ago, the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons was ad adopted mm -hmm. and many governments are now joining the treaty. Yeah. How do you see the development? And uh, please share with us your message to the world. Of course, you know, because 75 years, many of the survivors dreamed and hoped and said to the whole world, no more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki. And people start working. But 75 years passed, we still have it. And to me, being a Japanese, Japan exper experienced the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'm sincerely hope that Japan should tell the whole world, because Japan is the only country that we can say to the whole world, what's happened if we use the weapon, nuclear weapon? Then ask everybody to abolish the nuclear weapon. Because today, this nuclear weapon is much stronger than 25 years ago. So if something happened, not like, you know, 25 years ago, one country to another, no, it's going to include the whole world. Look at this beautiful, you know, our earth is just beautiful. And today, many people are trying to, you know, but still not the whole country. In order to save this planet, we as a whole got gathered and tell the abolition of the nuclear weapon from this world. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Such a powerful uh, message. Uh, and I think uh, uh, many people are uh, watching this. And so please write in if you have any comments or questions so that our colleagues can summarize and ask uh, uh, questions. Good morning, Akira. Uh, this is greetings from Geneva and thank you so much to Coco for uh, this very powerful testimony. We are getting a lot of comments and questions thanking you uh, for such a powerful message. Um, we have received a uh, question from Thomas Nordberg uh, thanking you from the bottom of his heart for your testimony and asking how nuclear weapon states can be persuaded to abolish nuclear weapons. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not a special, specialist to say this or that, but for my personal opinion, each person living in this world, think about your own family. So, you know, this, the, the how the radiation affects the human body. Then, you know, they can change it. So I still believe person to person. I tell one person, if somebody agree, they might take long, but the, that's the, you know, powerful one in order to change the, you know, uh, view. In order to be, because the children, the one, um, excuse me, you know, when I say children, including elementary school to the grad school, they are my children, I'm sorry. But, you know, they're the one carry the next century. So think about your own parents, own friends, if something happens, that's, you know, you don't want it to have it. That means as a whole, we human beings got together and 
we have to proceed, you know, one by one. That's the only thing I dream of. It. Maybe some people say, oh, that's going to be too long, but that's the, you know, if, if we can do that, the whole world has the same thinking that abolishing, we don't need that, you know, in order to keep this planet, we do not want to this powerful weapon, then we can make it. So we still have to, you know, give, the, give out the message, then I hope Thank we you can do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, You're welcome very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coco. You're welcome. You're Apologies, welcome. Thank there seems you. to be some delay in the line. I think uh, from the rest of the questions I can see, mostly it seems to be a lot of messages of gratitude to you for your powerful message and for continuing to share this testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My work is very small, but whoever listened to me, they can speak out and I think we can make it. We have to make it. Thank you. All right. So, thank you, Coco. All right. Ah, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> so, maybe final message. Okay. Thank you very much. I cannot do, uh, you know, we can, you know, how shall I say, like uh, each person cannot do it, but we as a core. But each person, you know, I will not say what to do, but each person should do whatever they can do. Then, you know, I think we can make it. I hope so. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, as I can, I can we are promoting uh, the treaty. Yes. So that as uh, many countries as possible yes. join this yes. treaty. And we have a strong norm against mm -hmm. nuclear weapons. Yes. And uh, we heard that uh, on the very day today, of Hiroshima Day, uh, a number of states are joining the treaty, you know? Good, good. So good. it's great yes, news. Yes. So I Thank really you. would Thank like you. to encourage all of you watching this uh, um, <clears throat> event to take action for the prohibition and elimination of the nuclear weapons. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, Coco.